Welcome, and get ready for this hilarious Michael Jordan story. This story showcases MJ's fierce competitive spirit, his brilliant humour, and his unwavering determination. If you're loving content just like this one and you want more, be sure to hit that like button for more videos just like this. Let's aim for 3000 likes for the next video. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. All video credits and footage are right here on the screen and also linked down below in the description. So be sure to check them out for their entireties. I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so let's dive into the video and I hope you guys enjoy. What do you think Mike's competitive edge was? You know, people talk a lot about, uh, you know, uh, skill. Uh, they talk a lot about, you know, uh, shooting ability, IQ. But is there a thing specifically that you thought set him aside? Just wanted to win, man. Yeah. I, I, he didn't care. And, and and that's easy for me to say that he didn't care. But at the end of the day, he's going to have a huge say in that win. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a quick story about Bob Knight. I just heard this yesterday. Sure. Rest his soul, rest his soul. He told me a story about Jordan. He said they were playing in the Olympic. Uh, it was, he was the last last guy to coach uh, a, a, a basketball team from America to win a gold medal that weren't, didn't have professionals, professionals yeah. right? Mm. So in 1984, I get invited to the Olympic trials. And that's probably at least 30 Hall of Famers was in on there. We started with like 120 players. And my coach says, Charles, I want you to go to the Olympic trials. You've been invited. I said, coach, you know, Bobby Knight, I don't know about him, blah, 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 blah. He says, no, just go. He said, I think you're the best player in the country. I want you to go there and prove it. Number seven, a 6'6 junior from Leeds, Alabama, and Auburn University, Charles Barkley. Nineteen eighty four was an Olympic year, and the US men's basketball team would win the gold medal. But before that, the American team had to be chosen, and tryouts were held at Indiana University. Eighty of the best players in the world, and we're all there trying out for twelve spots. It was a who's who of college players in one gym, with the goal of building a dominant national team. But even then, there was one player who stood out wherever he went. Well, Charles, from the beginning, was, was an interesting guy because, you know, he had this incredible uh, personality. So I go there, so we go, we got 120, and like I said, it's probably 30 or 40 Hall of Famers. Everybody who ever played in NBA in the last 30 years was there. So they go 120 to 180, 60, 40, 20. What I distinctly remember about that is Charles dunked the ball so many times. He would just dunk everything. You know, any kind of drill, if he caught the ball in a scrimmage, he dunked everything. And that didn't sit well with Olympic head coach Bobby Knight. Bobby was a proponent of give the ball to the guard. Well, he would do the same thing again, rebound, coast to coast and dunk it. Everybody's going crazy. So already we we're going to probably have a little bit of a banging of the heads, so to speak. Somebody asked Bob Knight, have you ever had a fat player? And Knight, the complete deadpan said, not for long. I don't think Barkley really cared that much whether he made the Olympic team or not. He knew that this was an opportunity to show everybody that he could, in fact, dominate at this level. And then they finally cut me. And I was pissed at Bobby Knight because he never gave me a fair chance because I, I was the best, second best player there by far. Charles Barkley was an RPIA. Royal pain in a <laughs> I was definitely the second best player that I'll get to the story. I, I go back to college and Sonny says, hey, I talked to John Thompson. I said, yeah, what do he say? He says, you were the second best player there. I say, I say, yeah, coach, I was the second best player there. And he said, who was the best player there? I said, coach, I just saw the best basketball player I ever seen in my life. His name is Michael Jordan. He's from North Carolina. A 6'5 junior from Wilmington, North Carolina. The University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, Michael Jordan. I said, I've never seen a basketball player. Like, I, I thought I was a really good player. But I said, this dude is the best I've ever seen. Yeah, Michael Jordan's the best player that's ever played anything, any team sport. 
Uh, we're ahead of uh, Spain in the gold medal game. I walked into the locker room after the first half of our game with Spain in 1984 for the gold medal. We're ahead by 29 points. They're up 29 points, USA. And Bob Knight's walking across the uh, uh, court to go in the locker room at halftime. He's like, what am I going to say to these guys to get them going, you know? Like, you know, they, they did everything right. You know, what am I going to say? And I'm walking off the floor at the, at the uh, forum in Los Angeles and I look up the scoreboard and this is halftime 28 halftime and, and I'm with uh, one of the great people in, in athletics CM Newton uh, who was with me through the Olympics and I turned to him and I said you know what, what the hell am I gonna say and I'm a great believer in let's say something that's gonna get us going in the second half let's just don't go in and say we played great what a great half this was let's relax and go play the second half I always want to think of something that I can say that kind of gets their attention and, and they know we've got another half to play. We've played basketball as well as the game can be played. Michael Jordan has played 12 minutes out of the 20. He has 11 rebounds, 9 assists, and 19 points in 12 minutes. And I still haven't thought of what I can say, and the first guy I see is Jordan. I think to myself, if I can say something to Jordan, everybody else is gonna pay a little bit of attention. They're gonna say, geez, if he's on Jordan, what's he think about the way I've played, you know? <laughs> and he, he grabbed a stat sheet as he walked across, he said, Jordan, he saw Jordan's name. Jordan played 12 minutes in the first half. Jordan's played 12 minutes, he has 19 points. He had 11 rebounds and nine assists Jesus. in 12 minutes in the first half. Wow. And, and he's thinking, what am I gonna say? So I got it. So I walk in and I, all of a sudden, it hits on what I'm gonna do. <clears throat> Michael Jordan sitting over here. As soon as I open the door, I see Michael Jordan the first one. So what do I do? I walk over here and I stand in front of Michael. And Michael looks up at me and I said, Mike, I said, you know how important screening is to us. And damn it, you haven't set a screen out there yet. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm, I'm trying to get us in shape to play the second half. God damn it, MJ, what are you doing? Are you gonna, are, are you gonna set any screens tonight? I haven't <laughs> seen you set one damn screen tonight. When the hell are you gonna screen somebody? <laughs> when, when are you gonna set a screen? When, when you're in the game, we got four guys screening, but you're not screening. When you're out of the game, we got five guys screening, we got good movement, we got good screening. All you've done the whole first half is score, rebound, and pass. When the hell are you gonna screen somebody? <laughs> so Jordan, uh, you know, God gave Jordan a lot of gifts, and, and among them is one of the great smiles of all time. He said MJ looked up with a, with a little grin, not a big one. He said, Coach, didn't I read recently where, where you said I was one of the quickest players you've ever been around? You remember last week when you told the whole world that, that I was the quickest person you ever seen on the basketball floor? I said, what the hell has that got to do with screening, Mike? And he looks up at me and he says, he said, I'm setting them so quick. I think I set them faster than you can see them. <laughs> <laughs> I said, just slow down a hair then. <laughs> you gotta love a kid like that. But the coach can never lose. So there are three kids sitting here. So I walk over, there are two kids sitting there. So I walk over and they're laughing, you know, about Mike's comment to me, you know. Right. And I said, all right. I said, you two guys thought this was really funny. I said, well, I'm gonna tell you about how funny it is because you two are in charge of Jordan for the second half. And if he doesn't set four screens in the first five minutes of the second half, I'm taking you two son of a bitches out of the game. <laughs> I turned around and walked away. Coach always has to win somehow. I don't care how. Steal, cheat, lie, whatever. Coach got to win in these circumstances. You know, I said, Mike, I said, I want this game over with, with four minutes to play in the game. I want it completely over with.
So Mike on his own with about, I think it was seven minutes to go in the game, calls timeout. So I'm wondering, what the hell is this all about? Michael calling timeout. So we get in a huddle and Mike comes in, puts his arm around my shoulders. Remember I told him I wanted this over with, with four minutes to go. Mike puts his arm around my shoulders. He says, coach, take a look at the time clock. We're seven minutes ahead of schedule out here. <laughs> is that, is that unbelievable? <laughs> I thought that was a good story. <laughs> Fucking legend. Yeah, man. man. That's Michael Jordan, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The kid is just an absolutely uh, great kid. If I were going to pick uh, the three or four best athletes I've ever seen play basketball, he'd be one of them. I think he's the best athlete I've ever seen play basketball, bar none. If I were going to pick people with the best ability I'd ever seen play the game, he'd be one of them. If I were going to pe pick the best competitors, that I'd ever seen play. He'd be one of them. So in the categories of competitiveness, ability, uh, skill, and then uh, athletic ability, uh, he's the best athlete, he's one of the best competitors, he's one of the most skilled players. And, and that, to me, makes him the best basketball player that I've ever seen play. I've had some tremendous memories during my professional basketball career, but the memory of standing as a representative of the United States at the Olympics is one of the proudest moments of my life. You step up on that podium representing your country. It's no greater honor than doing that. And let me know what you thought about the video down below in the comments section. Be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button. And here are two new videos I think that you will also enjoy. So be sure to check them out.